It may well be raining in the UK at the moment, but sunshine, rainbows and happiness abound. We've got a haul from Fancels to explore together, so thank you for joining me today. Welcome to Stone Magpie. My name is Suzanne and we're going to get into this haul straight away. Thank you, Ryan, for sorting out my choices to be able to show you viewers what I've chosen to explore. Sorry about any crackling whilst I delve into the pack. And we're going to start with this one. So the box has got instructions on the packet, slightly beaten up, but it won't spoil the product, which is diamond painting. A nice picture on the front. I don't think it relates to this particular kit. And as you can see, it is a cake stand. And I thought, what a great idea for a cake stand to be diamond painted. So I'm really looking forward to exploring further and seeing the designs inside. Ready for those summer days when we can sit outside with the beautiful cakes on a stand and drink tea with our little fingers stuck out, <laughs> pretending we're all posh-like. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Lots of bits and bobs in this one. Have I got everything out? Ooh, no. Oh, didn't get the crystals out. Anything else? I think we're out. Okay. So, how can I show you this to begin with? <laughs> I do like choosing these practical kits that I have no idea how they all go together. <laughs> Oh, honestly, I do do it to myself, don't I? Hey, we've got some instructions. Great, that should help. Installation instructions. The product includes... So, that's the list of what it... Product. Right, okay. Tear off the protective film on the back of the acrylic board of the product. Okay, so this looks like it's the bottom tier because it's the biggest then we have the next size up and then we've got the smallest of all so it is on acrylic which is really good to know because I was actually wondering about this being a cake stand and our sticky base and things like that I thought how is this going to work having delicious cream cakes and beautiful scones and all sorts of things on the tray. Now, it looks like they also come with this protective film so that when, once you've diamond painted the base, you can put this over the top. It has got a hole in the center for our bits and bobs to go through. So I'm really pleased to see that because I was thinking, would I have to do the mica powder or eyeshadow all over each layer like I did with my coasters here. These were also from Fancels. But it looks like we don't have to do that with having that extra protective layer. So great news. Okay, let's have a look at the design because it's all about design, isn't it? And this one is so pretty with the pinks purples and yellows, the florals all the way around the outside with those leaf details as well. And then inside they look quite tulip-like tulip perhaps. I think it's a really, really pretty design and each layer is different. So for the middle layer, it's a shaped edge rather than the circle. And we've got one big flower looks quite tropical with the corals and the pinks and the baby pink and then the pale blue outline and they look like little love hearts don't they in the middle surrounding this central floral with what looks like special shapes in the middle there so pretty and then the last smaller circle is Again, the blues and pinks and yellows tying it all together in this gorgeous floral design, which is like a little bit like the Yorkshire Rose. 
and all of the geometric stripes on the outside. So you can imagine this layered up with our beautiful cakes on. Oh, dead posh, dead posh. <laughs> so each layer has a protective acrylic by the looks of it, apart from the middle one. So have I missed one? Aha! It was still in the box. Hooray. That's good news because with this one being a shaped, we definitely need the proper protective layer for this one. It would have been quite tricky to cut one out. <laughs> so, I, do you know, I love this. I am so impressed with this kit. Now, what's this bit for? Oh, OK. This looks quite dinged, I have to say. I think it's not supposed to have those dents in it, but. So once we've diamond painted all of our bits, we would tear off the adhesive paper on the back of the anti-slip pad. That's this. Align the anti-slip pad with the center point of the largest acrylic base and stick it on. So that would be peeled off, stuck on here to create a felt-like base for when we put it on the table and then it's not going to slip and it also protects the table from any scratches. I mean, my table's scratched anyway, so it doesn't really matter on here. <laughs> Place the protective pad in the center of the anti-slip pad and put the iron sheet in. So this is this gubbings here. So this is how you fit it all together. And then you align the largest PET sheet, which is this acrylic one, and screw the inserts in. So you build it up layer on layer until you have the cake stand with this posh top to it, with that shape on. Very, very nice, right. So that's the practical side of it. Let's have a look at the crystals, of course. Toolkit is a basic toolkit, green tray, single placer, a few baggies and some pink wax. But this is what we want to see, isn't it? Ooh. Oh, they're already in their own baggies as well. Brilliant. And with this kit, I wouldn't even bother kitting up, you know. I would just work from the baggies. I think I would start with the base and then complete the whole base and then move on to the second layer. But that is entirely up to you how you would go about diamond painting. Let's spread these out so we can see them all while we look at these crystals and hopefully you can see where they might sit and what they might look like as we go through. I'm not going to do them in numerical order. I'm going to do the round colours first and then we'll get on to the special shapes after that. Okay, so we've got this beautiful bright tealy blue. We have a navy blue. We have got, hmm, is that a black? I think that's black. If it's not black, it's a very, very, very dark blue or grey. I think it's black. It's funny because I can't really see any blacks. Oh yes, maybe in between those there. We have a very bright magenta deep pink. We have more of a mid bright pink, a bright turquoise, an orange, a yellow, a red, a brighter red, and a purple. So they are all our round crystals. 
These are the usual sized rounds. Next we have some bigger rounds to look at. Starting with this bigger turquoise, quite similar to that colour. We have a bigger purple. Are these faceted? Mm, I think they're faceted as well. Lovely. Ooh, ooh. I love these ABs. These are definitely faceted. They are little sparklers, aren't they? Look at the colours in those. They are an orange pink. But loads of other colours coming out as well. Oh, beautiful. And another AB faceted round with this one's like a clear AB with all of the colours sparkling from that one. And now we get on to special shapes. Starting with marquee shapes. These ones are quite a neutral, like a neutral pale brown, but mm, that's not a very good description because it's quite pretty. Um, I don't know what to call that because it's such a beautiful neutral colour. I think I'm going to leave it as that. <laughs> don't really know what to call it. Marquis Gold. <gasps> Look at those. Bing, bing. Beautiful. Then we're getting on to, we've got an oval here in this beautiful deep pink. That looks very similar to this colour. We have a blue faceted teardrop. Look how pretty that is. Pale blue. We have a teardrop in blue AB. Ooh, fab. That, look at that one. It's got teals and blues and pinks and purples. Each one sparking slightly different with those. That one's more green and yellow. Oh, ooh, they're just lovely, aren't they? <laughs> and then look at these as well. They're like a pearlescent AB teardrop. Oh, with pinks, yellows. It's an orange base, but oh, wow. And I think straight away, I think they are gonna go there. Oh, maybe a bit small, 15, oh no. 15 is this one in the middle of there. Oh, pretty. So where is 14? Ah, spotted one, right on the outskirts of this. Now this is the middle tier and it's going to have these beautiful, beautiful cabochon oranges there and these fantastic AB stones there. Ooh. So even though it's the middle tier, we're not being disappointed on detail at all there. Number 16 on the edge, where's number 16? What are they? 16. Oh, these gorgeous, gorgeous pale blue teardrops. It's gonna have it all that layer. Let's see what this one is. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, crackling. 15s again, more of those fantastic AB teardrops there. And we've got lots of rounds. We've got the number 12 on a little flower design here. Oh, those ones. Oh, they're so pretty. Then we've got 13s, which are definitely these ones. So this orange colour, the gold colour, is going to be outlined in that pink. Oh, wow. This is such a delightful kit. I will put the link in the description box below for everything I am showing you today so you can find it easily. And there are other designs on these cake trays. So if you would like to explore that, then do go and have a look. But I have to say, I think I chose the nicest. <laughs> so amazing. 
love it absolutely love it so that's kit number one to show let's move on to kit number two here we've got it <laughs> Oh, I think you'll know straight away why I chose this one. Let's open it and have a look further. Wow, the colours and look at this image. It's fabulous. Now, I do love a good succulent. <laughs> they are probably the easiest plant to look after. And I just thought this would be amazing on the wall with um, some real succulents underneath. So imagine the display. You've got your beautiful diamond painting, all finished, sparkling, and then some vases with cacti and succulents underneath the display. I just thought it would be absolutely brilliant. So in this one, um, you can see it's slightly crumpled, so I would have to put it under my mattress to straighten it, flatten it under my divan. I'm pulling back this cover straight away to make those colours pop and don't they? Wow, we've got a dark background again and I always say it, with the darker background it makes the colours stand out even more. And what colours we've got here, we've got reds and oranges and obviously greens. Now, this is a round diamond painting so the cactus spikes may not show up but I think because of the shapes, it won't disappoint. I think your mind will automatically know it's prickly. <laughs> Maybe with the shading, it will look like they are stood out. We'll have to see that when I get to diamond paint this one. The symbols are all capital letters mixed up on the legend here. We've got a legend down the top left and at the bottom right and we've got 24 colours. Looking at the grid, I would say this one is really easy to read. Usually when it's more tricky is in the darker areas. So perhaps if we look at this vase here, such a cute little vase. I actually wish I had that vase in real life. Hmm, might have to source one. Um, yeah, the greys and the blacks We've got like a P symbol there. I will zoom in to try and give you a better view. The P symbol is probably the most difficult because it's on a dark, it's a dark symbol on a dark background. So in certain areas, they can be quite tricky to pick out. It's easier when they printed white symbols on dark backgrounds or black symbols on paler backgrounds. So have a look and see what you think yourself. I don't think it's too much of an issue for me, but it depends on your own eyesight. And I do struggle with my eyesight sometimes. I do have to wear reading glasses. So to me, it's not too bad, this one. And it does look quite confetti-ish in places, apart from these big, bold vases here. And the background looks like there's quite a lot of multi-placing here. So, not too bad at all. Very sticky, as you can tell, as I put this back to give a better view of the other side. And I wouldn't recommend pulling back the cover until you're diamond painting, unless you're going to put lots of release papers down. And release papers are used to section off your painting as you go along, if you don't know. Release papers are used to section off. They are, well, I use the double-sided because then I don't have to worry about what side I'm placing down because, you know, <laughs> I try to avoid as many calamities as I can. And you would section off each one with a release 
paper. So that's the only reason I would take off this cover normally. I do tend to keep my cover on as I'm diamond painting, especially with rounds. So I put my release papers across two rows and then I cover those up with the protective cover until I want to diamond paint. Then I would pull the protective cover back, diamond paint the section that I want to do. And when I'm finished doing that, I will put the cover back on just as a bit of extra protection against dust and anything that's in the environment really. Okay. Okay, so the cover is now back on again and we're going to have a look at the diamonds. First, the toolkit is the basic toolkit, green tray, pink wax and a single placer. No multi-placer in this one. Fancels are a budget site, so that's why we tend to get the budget toolkits with these. Here are the round diamonds. Okay, let's explore these colours all in their own individual packs. Start at number one, shall we? Right, number one. I'm going to turn them over so we can see the colours a lot better. Starting with a very pretty pink. Really gorgeous, that one. Then we've got a brown. Looks like we've got three packs of number three, which is 310 black. So that will tell you how much black is in this kit for that background. We have a red, an orange, but it's a, it's a subtle orange, this one. Two different greens, another red, a purple, a pow of a green, a pow of an orange, a bright yellow, another bright orange. I think that's um, 823, eight, very dark blue, dark brown, dark green. Wow, bright green, another deeper green, a turquoise, a bright pink, a deep mid blue, Ooh, a deep teal, a lime green and another yellowy orange. Really, really pretty colours in this one as I thought there would be. That one is going to be a delight to, di to diamond paint and a 40 by 40, so not too large an undertaking. Not quite a snack size, I would say, a small mid-size. <laughs> I just can't wait to see these vases diamond painted. I just think they are so pretty. It's like somebody's come and hand painted each vase. Oh, I really, really want some in my life. I need to go and source some of those and put a little cactus or succulent in ready for my display. So that is kit two. Good choices, don't you think? Do you agree? Let me know which is your favourite. And now lastly, but not leastly, yes, it's a cross stitch kit. You may know that I've started a floss tube channel. I've got back into stitching as well and I thought this kit would be beautiful to stitch. So I've chosen this one. Look at the details in this beautiful picture with that big black cat, the globe sat on a book, candle, a book open here, the key, the window with the moon in the background and the bookcase behind, just full of lots of lovely details, this one. Now I won't show you the, the chart, but I am going to have a look at it 
because in my last video I mentioned about cross stitch kits and how easy they could convert to diamond paintings. If you've got leftover diamonds or if you want to buy in the correct colours etc and a blank canvas then you could easily get this for the chart and diamond paint the picture. I will very quickly open it out just to see if this would be one that could be converted to a diamond painting. For the stitches among us, then I will be showing this on my Floss Tube channel and I don't know when I'm going to start it because you'll know that I've got lots of whips already on the go. Look at this cute little thing. We've got the needle threader here and we've got like a pom-pom thimble with all of the needles in. <laughs> really sweet. We've got all of the flosses, the threads that we need. Wow, a, wow, what a bundle. Look at the colours. So of course, if you are thinking that you might be able to convert this one into a diamond painting, you will need quite a few colours by the looks of it. Um, there are duplicates in this one, so I won't be able to work out how many unless the chart tells me, but they are stunning colours. Oh, gorgeous. Right. The canvas is here. Aha! Great. So it's given us a legend down the right hand side with the DMC numbers. So this does make it a lot easier to convert. And we've got 43 colours. And you'll be able to see those down the side alongside their symbols. And this particular IADA has got a count down the left and at the top to help you plot your counted cross stitch a lot easier. I've never bought a blank canvas for diamond painting, but I understand that they are gridded. Um, so that could help you as well if you were converting this one. Let me have a quick look at this chart and I'll see if there's any back stitching and things like that that might stop you changing this one to a diamond painting. Okay, so this is the chart itself. I folded it over because we can't give away the intellectual property of the chart, but it will give you a really good idea. The chart is on one piece of paper and we've got the picture design here 55 by 40 and we've got instructions for cross stitch included. Now I've had a look at the chart and I'm really happy to say that this is stitched full cross for the whole design so it would be so easy to convert this chart and I'm going to show you the little corner. I'm not going to give any more than that away because you'll see that it is a colour chart to follow. So where that number 15 is, that is all the number 15 thread or diamond colour that you would need. So it's a really simple chart, this one. I'm really looking forward to this and I, I just hope that the detail for this cat comes out in this stitching, being a full cross of this size. This is one that we're going to have to see how it looks once it's finished because I just can't imagine all of that detail <laughs> transferring to this size material. So do follow my flush tube videos as well and you may well see this one. Another thing to say with this kit is that you don't have to start in the middle which is where I usually start on a cross stitch to center it because as I've shown you the chart, you can start wherever you want on this one. So that's really good. A really easy cross stitch to start with, I feel. Even though we've got 43 colours, I do think it would be easy enough to start as a beginner. 
If you're interested in following my floss tube and seeing this one develop as I stitch it, then please do subscribe. I do upload floss tube videos at the end of each month, so it would be lovely to see you there as well. I'm not sure when I'll get started on this one because I have got quite a few whips on the go, <laughs> but I really am intrigued about what detail we are going to get. And so this completes my haul from Fancels. I have to say I'm thrilled with it all and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe. It is always appreciated and it's always lovely to have you here with me. I love reading all of your comments so thank you so much for everybody that does so and I hope to see you here next time. In the meantime, enjoy your own diamond painting and keep sparkling. Bye!